Geschichte. My name is Dan Albert. I serve as the executive director for the Solana Foundation. Um, I've been involved in the Solana ecosystem since the very beginning. Um, I was one of the early protocol developers at the Solana Labs team, um, helped get the first validators off the ground and helped get the network running. And, and um, what we're aiming for today at the Solana Foundation is to attempt to sort of be a, uh, a coordinating um, uh, sort of force for good in the Solana ecosystem. Um, the foundation does not control Solana, the network. We don't control the, the ecosystem or what anybody chooses to build. Solana is and always has been a completely open and permissionless network um, that anyone can participate in. Um, the Solana Foundation exists to provide resources to help unblock more and more people who want to come and build and add value and, and have fun and build communities and build products on the Solana blockchain and in the Solana ecosystem. Solana was born out of a desire to help scale blockchains to a global scale, to bring blockchain to billions of people um, as fast as possible and as cheaply as possible. Um, in the early days, we were looking at existing ecosystems, um, Ethereum and Cosmos, and seeing what worked well and what didn't work well, and uh, just didn't really see like a, uh, a scaling solution there that could really reach a global audience. The idea here with Solana is to create a global state machine, um, a network that can transfer data through the blockchain as fast as information travels across the internet. And the only way we could do that was to rethink how blockchain architectures and blockchain networking protocols worked from the ground up. Um, so high speed and low cost have always been the most important things in Solana's decentralized network. That is what Solana has always optimized for and built for, um, and we're continuing to do that today. When we launched the network uh, in Solana, there was only a handful of validators uh, running a very basic smart contract platform. Uh, today, the Solana network is composed of over 3,000 nodes uh, validating the entire blockchain in 400 locations, 40 countries on six continents. So it is truly a global network. And the idea is to be able to propagate data through the blockchain as fast as information travels through fiber optic cables on the internet. Um, so a lot of Solana's design decisions, for example, there's no mempool, there's no waiting time between blocks, transactions are processed in parallel inside the Solana validator. All of these things were designed to um, increase Solana's capacity and decrease latency, which ultimately means a better faster and cheaper experience for the user. Um, today, there's a new validator under development. Uh, it's called Fire Dancer. It's being built by a brilliant engineering team at Jump Trading. The Fire Dancer validator is a complete rewrite of the existing Solana validator. So they're building from a fresh code base, super, super high performance C code, um, and are looking at 10x or 100x performance improvements in the existing Solana code base. So as fast and as high performance as Solana is now, uh, looking forward to you know, more developments from Fire Dancer over this year and into next year to make Solana even faster. Solana is designed to scale with the hardware that runs the network. There are no fundamental limits on the capacity in throughput or number of users or number of transactions that Solana can support. Um, because Solana processes transactions in parallel, this uses multiple threads and multiple cores on the validator node CPU. Um, hardware always gets faster. Computers get faster year over year. Chips get faster and more cores. So as these chips naturally get faster, because companies like Intel and AMD and NVIDIA continue to compete with one another to make the best chips in the world, um, the Solana network will be able to handle more transactions at the individual node level. On the bandwidth side, um, internet traffic always gets faster. Um, more and more people around the world are getting gigabit fiber to their homes, 
multi gigabit fiber to their businesses. Um, so the Solana protocol is only constrained by how fast the hardware is, and it always gets faster, and how fast the bandwidth is that connects the nodes, and this also only gets faster. Solana was designed to have um, a single global state, no matter how many users, no matter how many transactions, um, without fragmenting the ecosystem or fragmenting the user experience, um, like we're starting to see you know, some of the user experience challenges with uh, modular solutions and L2s and certain bridges um, in other ecosystems, everything is unified on Solana. And because the, the transaction capacity is so large, this does not impact the user experience. So one person can be minting an NFT, another person can be using a social app, someone else can be doing a trade on DeFi, and I can go to you and, and pay a few dollars for my coffee. All of these things can coexist at the same time for the same low fee um, on the, the single Solana network. In order for crypto to reach every internet connected person on earth, we need to crypto to be accessible where people are. Most people engage with the internet and will engage with crypto through their mobile phones. Um, historically, the mobile experience for crypto has been pretty rough. Um, you know, there's a lot of restrictions, particularly in the two major app stores from Apple and Google, um, there's a lot of restrictions on what kind of applications can be deployed in a mobile ecosystem, which has limited the kind of user experiences that um, you know, creative crypto app developers are able to bring to people on their mobile phones. Um, Solana Mobile is a project from the team at Solana Labs, and it was a bet to try to bootstrap a decentralized application store, a crypto-first seed vault, um, inside the phone so that the phone itself is as secure as a hardware wallet um, and a development kit called the Solana Mobile Stack which enables app developers to build um, all sorts of crypto applications, deploy them on the Solana Mobile decentralized app store without needing to be blocked by the traditional app store duopoly of Apple and Google so that you can start to get a critical mass of developers and users um, having real rich, you know, um, mobile experiences that take advantage of the underlying blockchain technology. Um, the Solana mobile team recently announced chapter two, which is the second iteration of the, of the phone from Solana mobile. Um, they pre-sold over a hundred thousand units in the first 30 days since the, the phone was announced. Um, so those units I believe are expected to start shipping in 2025. Uh, to everyone who pre-ordered, but it really signals an incredible demand for people who want to bring the crypto experience to where normal people touch the internet, which is their mobile phones. NFTs and DeFi. Um, NFTs, Solana had uh, sort of our first NFT boom in uh, 2021 uh, with the launch of Metaplex and the, NF the first NFT token standard on Solana. And... I think a lot of people use NFTs for, for art, for fun, for collectibles, and I think that's really great. Um, one interesting thing is these can be used to represent so much more and bring a lot more rich um, application experiences using non-fungible tokens. Um, one interesting technical development uh, that came out in 2022 are uh, what are called compressed NFTs. Um, compressed NFTs uh, uses some technology on both the Solana ledger and in the Solana account database uh, to dramatically reduce the cost of minting new NFTs. So you take Solana's already low transaction fees combined with extremely low minting fees for NFTs, and you can create 1 million NFTs on Solana for a fraction of a dollar. And you can continue to use this for art, but you can, when you can create so many NFTs at scale, and deliver them to users and use them as receipts or coupons or redeemable tokens or any other sort of um, unique collectible or, authentic or authentication, the product possibilities uh, of what you can do with NFTs and Solana, particularly compressed NFTs, are really much, much broader um, than in other ecosystems where it might be very expensive or very slow to create NFTs or transfer them between users and applications. As far as DeFi is concerned, I think Solana is the perfect place for DeFi. Um, the speed of Solana and the unified global state of Solana having uh, a singular architecture 
um, really makes it a hotbed for uh, DeFi protocols and new types of financial primitives. Um, what we've seen on Solana is that even though there might be, um, say, fewer dollars locked in the TDL on Solana when compared to a blockchain like Ethereum, what we see is the amount of volume, the amount of movement of those dollars or tokens that represent dollars is much, much greater. And so what this corresponds with is a higher degree of capital efficiency on the chain. Because you can make uh, a 50 cent trade or a 50 cent payment on Solana and the transaction fee will not be $5, but it will be a quarter of a penny, that many, many more people can do a lot more transactions um, engaging with all sorts of financial primitives with much lower friction and much lower cost of entry. And that's the reason why I think DeFi has had an incredible run so far on Solana and I think has an incredible future. I guess the one thing that I would want you know our audience in Korea to know is um, come build, come join us, come play and have fun. Um, there's a ton of really fun, really experimental apps um, that you can use on Solana. Um, you know, we love our communities that are popping up all over the world, um, in various countries in Asia, in Korea, in the Middle East, in Europe. Um, Solana really is for everyone. Um, and so I encourage everyone, you are welcome, come uh, join us. Let's go Crypto Korea. Much love to all of our uh, Solana lovers in Korea. Thank you.